Item. SCP-1121. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Only two specimens have been collected of SCP-1121. Both at initial containment. These are kept in one of Biological Research Site-13's refrigerated biohazard containment cells in a freezing medium composed of 12% dimethyl sulfoxide. 20% heat inactivated calf serum and axenic medium at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Cultures of SCP-1121-1 are kept in a glycerol stock under identical temperatures in a separate refrigerated biohazard containment cell. Due to the rarity of SCP-1121 samples, tests are to use SCP-1121-1 cultures instead. Testing is to be authorized and conducted by at least one level 4 member of on-site research staff. All personnel not designated a test subject are to wear level A hazmat suits with SCBA-1 before handling any cultures of SCP-1121-1. Failure to do so will result in termination and subsequent incineration. Should infections with SCP-1121-1 be reported outside of Foundation control, a quarantine is to be instated within a 10km radius of the established epicenter. All victims not yet deceased are to be terminated followed by controlled incineration of all bodies. Seemingly uninfected civilians and personnel within the quarantine zone will be detained and monitored. If they develop no symptoms after 24 hours, they are to be administered Class A amnestics and relocated. Any individuals that do develop symptoms within that time period are to be terminated and incinerated. A suitable cover story will be circulated to the media. Description. SCP-1121 is a previously unknown amoeboid protozoa with very specific mutagenic qualities triggered only by Staphylococcus epidermidis, a normally benign bacterium present on human skin. If introduced to other organisms, SCP-1121 remains dormant. DNA extracted from samples of SCP-1121 shares genes with several insect species, such as Afrosimex constrictus, Grylotalpa brachyptera and Doru aculeatum while also containing several genes not currently found in known flora or fauna. SCP-1121 does not seem to procreate naturally and does not need fluid to survive. Once introduced to S. epidermidis SCP-1121 mutates all instances of the bacteria into SCP-1121-1, classified as Staphylococcus epidermidis exitiabilis before dying. At this point, a subject is considered infected and will start to show stage I symptoms as detailed below. Note that, while S. epidermidis does not normally cause infection in healthy human beings, the SCP-1121-1 pathogen infects 100% of subjects exposed to it. SCP-1121-1 has proven resistant to all known antibiotics and at this time no known cure for infections with Staphylococcus epidermidis exitiabilis exists. A subject infected with SCP-1121-1 goes through a set number of stages. I. Two to five hours after initial infection small white layers appear on the skin. This does not differ from infection by S. epidermidis, making wrong diagnosis a distinct possibility. 2. Approximately 24 hours after the onset of stage I, the layers will gradually begin to disappear, the infection having spread to the lower layers of the patient's skin. SCP-1121-1 then consumes the subcutaneous tissue, transforming it into a highly viscous substance. This process is extremely painful. The sufferer's skin is at this point connected to underlying tissues only by the substance excreted by SCP-1121-1. In addition, subject skin turns pale and slouches in areas. Mimicking the effects of massive sudden weight loss. 3. Patients begin removing their skin from their body. Most sufferers use their own hands for skinning, 
Though in some cases patients resorted to using various tools including knives, windshield scrapers and in one case a redacted. This process seems to be painless due to the events of stage 2 and does not seem to be a conscious activity. When the anomalous substance underneath the skin is exposed to air, it gradually data expunged, commonly found on insects. Victims rapidly become disoriented and invariably hostile to anyone not infected by SCP-1121-1 as the process of skin removal progresses. In light of this, termination of all victims is necessary, preferably before the disease enters stage 3. No occurrences of SCP-1121 have been observed outside of initial containment, but the bacterium replicates itself rapidly during stages I and II. Infection of new patients occurs primarily by skin-to-skin -skin contact, though evidence exists of infections spreading in situations where no direct contact was observed. Making level A hazmat equipment a precautionary must when handling any samples of SCP-1121-1. Furthermore, SCP-1121-1 has been observed to remain active long after stage 3 has concluded, with samples of skin showing active cultures of the mutated bacteria for up to years after initial infection. It is currently unknown during what period of time removed skin remains an infection hazard. Addendum 1121-01, Recovery and Preliminary Containment Notes. SCP-1121 was discovered on a meteorite unearthed during an archaeological dig-in, New Mexico in 19. The archaeologist first exposed to the meteorite was infected with SCP-1121-1 and is at this point considered to be patient 0. Within two days the infection had spread from patient 0 to the entire on-site research team and several citizens of. Initial containment was managed by the CDC, but after patient 0 entered stage 3 of the disease, operatives within that agency brought in the foundation. The meteorite and patient zero were transferred to biological research site 13 and all land in a 10 kilometer radius around the dig site was cleared using MK-77 bombs. The only known colonies of SCP-1121 were recovered from the meteorite. Mass spectrometer analysis using rubidium strontium dating of samples determined its age to be approximately 2,500,000,000 to 100,000 years.